Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and we got a lot of news to cover this week. We got Morbius finally being released after a two-year delay, a purge of Warner Media, and new films in development. Let's start off with the domestic box office numbers. Opening in first place is Morbius with 39.1 million. Dropping to second place is The Lost City with 14.8 million for a total of 54.5 million. Third place was The Batman with 10.8 million for a total now of 349 million. And fourth place was Uncharted with 3.6 million for a total of 138.9 million. Finally in fifth place is Jujutsu Kaisen Zero with 1.9 million for a total of 31.3 million. So Morbius was finally released and at least box office wise, it did good. On a budget of 75 million, a 39 million uh, opening domestic is really solid. Now, everything else about the film, not good. Reviews came out the day before and critics ripped it apart with many calling it one of, if not the worst film of 2022, but not only that, basically the worst superhero film since the Fantastic Four won back in, I believe, 2015. So yeah, the worst in seven years. As of now, in Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 16% score, which is absolutely terrible. Now, for the movie watchers, they seem to be a little bit more forgiving, but not much. On Rotten Tomatoes, the current viewer rating is 70%. However, the cinema score the film got over the weekend was a C+, which is, again, terrible. This is the same score given to another popular comic book film, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. That score is more accurate than we should expect a heavy, heavy drop-off next weekend, especially as Sonic 2 opens. Still, as long as the overall numbers for Mor Morbius hold up a bit, this will still be a success for Sony. Enough to do a sequel? Eh, I don't know about that. I think Sony, with the reception for this movie, I think Sony will be happy just taking a small profit and be on their way. The Lost City held up pretty well from its opening weekend, only dropping 51% on track to finish with at least $75 million, and the Batman is about to pass $350 million domestic. Taking a look at China, well, the box office sadly continues to collapse. It does not help, though, that Shanghai is in a full lockdown, one of the biggest cities in the world with over 25 million people restricted to their homes. Still, new films have come out, so we got numbers to talk about. Staying in first place is Moonfall with 3.2 million for a total of 15.9 million. In second place was Escape Room, 20 Minute Champions, which opened with 1.9 million. You know, this film that was uh, just came out all the way from, I believe, last year. Uh, everywhere else but China. It should be noted though for Escape Room that it opened on Saturday, not Friday, so it only has two days worth of numbers. Third place was Hotel Transylvania Transformia with 1.8 million. And it should also be noted for this one that it opened on Sunday, uh, so only one day numbers. Not really sure why. Fourth place was Man on the Edge with 1.5 million. Uh, these were preview showings from a wide release set for April 15th. And finally in fifth place was The Batman with 1.2 million for a total of 20.1 million. These numbers remind me very much of the domestic box office numbers in 2020 after Tenet opened and the only films that came out were low budget ones from smaller studios. Everyone remembers the war with Grandpa, right? <laughs> in some good news for Warner Brothers, though, they have received an extension for the Batman to stay in theaters until May 17th. While it's not making much now, I think the hope is by May, COVID in Shanghai and in other cities is under control, allowing theaters to reopen, people will go out. I do hope that if you're in one of the cities locked down, that you stay safe. Looking at worldwide numbers, Morbius made $44.9 million internationally for a worldwide opening weekend of 84 million. Again, for Sony, that's a pretty solid start. It just needs to hold it a bit for the film to make a profit at the box office. Paramount released Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in 31 markets over the weekend and made 25.5 million. The Batman made another 13.4 million for a worldwide total of 361.5 million. Ambulance is now at 18.5 million ahead of its domestic release this weekend. The Bad Guys made another 10.5 million for a total of 28.8 million. Finally, Deadline is reporting that RRR has passed 100 million worldwide. So moving to the news from Hollywood is that the merger between Warner Media and Discovery is completed. It was official on Friday, and with it, a new updated logo for the company, which, thank God, looks better than the one they were using last year. 
that one looked like some word art in Microsoft Word, let me tell you. With the merger being completed, though, this has meant a mass exodus of executives from Warner Media. These happened in the week in the run-up to Friday and includes Warner Media CEO Jason Killer, Warner Brothers head Ann Sarnoff, head of HBO Max Andy Forzel, CTO Richard Tom, CFO Jennifer Bry, and others. The only surprising part of this news is that it's happening this quick, but I guess they were told that, look, you can either stay and be fired or you can leave on your own. But for them actually leaving, that's not a shock at all. Uh, for a lot of these big positions, it does not make sense to have two CEOs, two CFOs, and so on. Also, while Warner Media is merging with Discovery and their name is going first on a new company name, Discovery does have more say in how the company is organized, and we are seeing this come into play. With the merger now completed, we now get to see how the new company will reorganize their streaming services over the coming month. The majority of the news this week was a ton of new films being developed for streaming platforms. Let's start with Netflix, and with a film that's already being completed, and that is their Marilyn Monroe film starring Anna de Arms. Why are we talking about it then? Well, because the MPAA has given it the NC-17 rating. This makes it the first film Netflix has produced to get this rating, and it is something the director, Andrew Dominic, expected to get when they submitted it. As of now, Netflix has not said when it would be released, and when they do release it, if they can get some theaters to play it to qualify for an award run. This is an odd story, because there are very few NC-17 rated films, so to have one being released with it is a story in and of itself. Now we have to see if the film itself is actually any good. Staying with Netflix, but for a film that was in development, and now put on hold, is Fast and Loose. Why is it put on hold? Well, because of Will Smith. The Hollywood Reporter has the exclusive on this, and what happened was a week before the Oscars, they lost their director for it, David Lettich, and they were looking for a replacement when the slap happened. After that, and not having a director, it's now on the back burner for the company. As for Mr. Lettich, he moved to direct a new film in Universal called Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling. I haven't heard of the film until now, but here in the synopsis of the Will Smith one, the fast and loose film, it does sound interesting. It's about a crime lord who, after getting attacked, loses his memory and discovers he has a double identity of also being a CIA agent. Uh, with this move, though, the only next big Will Smith film right now is Emancipation for Apple TV+. Plus. But don't worry, Netflix is working on a new film this week. It was announced that Laura Dern and Liam Hemsworth have signed on to star in the film Lonely Planet for Netflix. As for what the film is about, all we know is that it is a love story set in Morocco and will be written and directed by Suzanne Grant. So it's not a film that really interests me that much, personally, but at least Netflix isn't being left out from all the streaming news this week. Moving over to HBO Max, where it looks like Sherlock Holmes TV shows are going into development. Two of them, in fact. Right now, there are two separate shows, with each show focused on a different character. Robert Downey Jr. will be joining as an executive producer, as his production company, Team Downey, will help make the shows. However, there are a few questions for these shows. Are they actually set in the film franchise Warner Brothers made a decade ago? Uh, if so, will Mr. Downey show up at all as Holmes, or, for that fact, will Jude Law as Watson show up? Based on Deadline's article for the news, it seems that it is connected to the films, but the shows will be focused on characters we have not seen yet. For me, though, that only works if they are introduced in the third film, starring the main characters, right, the one we've been waiting for years. They're introduced there, and then they get their shows. And then, you know, we follow them on to their next adventure. Or the shows are so good that we are more excited to see a third film when we see, say, in the trailer, oh, these new characters that we've watched are now in this film. Basically what I'm saying right now is these shows don't work without a third film somewhere. But these are in early in development, so who knows if they ever get produced. Now let's head to Amazon where they have a few new films in the works. First it is a, an exclusive from Deadline, and that is an action comedy film called Officer Exchange. The film was sold to Amazon Studios and will star John Cena. The script is being written by Evan Turner and Ben Zavzov. Uh, no word on who will be directing it yet. Uh, John Cena did this comedy really well, so if the script is solid, this could be a good hit for Amazon. Another film they are working on is Ending Things. Deadline also has the exclusive on this, and that is Amazon bought the rights to it, and will star Anthony Mackie and Picha Chopra. As for the plot of the film, both leads are in a professional and personal relationship with Chopra's character being an assassin. One day, she wants to cut all ties to Mackie's character, but soon realizes she wants to still have a personal relationship with him. Deadline wasn't clear on this, but this sounds like this could either be a play, you know, like a straight drama or a dark comedy. 
Right now, it's not known who the director would be and when filming would. On paper, these sounds like solid hits for Amazon, and I'd be interested in watching them. I'll just have to see if they actually turn out good. Finally, let's wrap up with Disney, where they are making a change to where their content is going. So last week, I talked about the new chief of te technology hire and how his experience might be used in, say, getting Disney Plus built, a, you know, building on live streaming more. Uh, well, <laughs> Disney is already doing it. Deadline has the exclusive on this, and that is Dancing with the Stars, starting this fall, will be moved from ABC and will instead air on Disney Plus in both the U.S. and Canada. Now, as for what will be filling the time slot for ABC, well, Disney is sharing Monday Night Football now from ESPN. Uh, this is not a surprising move from Disney, as you might think, well, why did it not go to Hulu? Disney's focused on moving everything to Disney Plus and building it out. So if they have a big show that they can move... For their TV station, ABC, this is also a win because Monday Night Football, let's be honest, will bring in huge viewers. This means they can charge more for ads, which means more money. I would not be surprised, though, if some other ABC shows start to move over their Disney Plus throughout the year, if they think it fits. And that's it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the episode is, are you interested in watching the Sherlock Holmes TV show on HBO Max? Let me know on Facebook. Link to the page is in the show notes. And thank you for listening.